If you've ever been to fair or an Italian street fair and you've had a sausage and pepper sandwich, you know how good it could be. And today I'm gonna show you how to make it at home. Today's episode is sponsored by the fact that New York City just banned plastic and it's likely going to be something in the world that happens. And so obviously you're gonna need your very own hate less, cook more tote. It's a beautiful tote. It's really well made. It's thick. It's not flimsy like some of them can be. It's got an interior pocket. The straps are big enough so you can just throw it around your shoulder and it's easy. We're all doing our best to try and do our part. And so if you need a tote, I'll leave a link down below. But now that the business is aside, let's talk about sausage and peppers. Like I said, I just have fond memories of any time there's an outdoor market or street fair or something like that. Somebody's usually either selling Zeppelis, which you know I love, and Italian sausage and peppers in a roll. We've done an episode of this before. This was way back when, the first episode I ever did on a grill, I believe. My little Weber Smoky Joes were sausage and peppers grilled outside. I even put a little broccoli rabe on top, which I love doing on the grill. And you can obviously do it in this recipe as well. But today we're gonna show you how to do it inside, which is a little bit of a different technique. Not gonna use broccoli rabe again. You can use it if you want. We've got a nice little roll. We've got some bell pepper. We've got some onion, obviously. I like to throw a little a cubanelle pepper in. It's just like a little different flavor than the bell pepper and then some garlic. I also like to put provolone in my sandwiches. You don't have to, but I think it goes really well with one of these. It's very straightforward. It's kind of a one pan thing. All we have to do is cut up vegetables real quick and then we can jump over to the stove and just get right into it. So I'm just going to cut the onion to slices. I'm gonna slice the garlic. I'm gonna cut the peppers the same way I would into fajitas. So I'm just gonna run through that and then we're good. This is pretty easy and quick recipe. I got a frozen bag of carrots. I'm starting a new little scrap bag. So I'm taking the onion skins, the pepper peels, the garlic papers. I'm just gonna throw them right in here. Back into the freezer. We can make a vegetable broth with that kind of stuff later down the road. But now I've got garlic, I got my peppers and onions ready to go. So we have everything prepped. Here's how we're going to cook it. I got a pan, this is an enamel cast iron pan. It's got a, a kind of smoother coating over it so it's just easier to clean. It's a heavy pan, so we get this on the pan, get it nice and hot, a little bit of oil in there, and then we're going to sear both sides of the sausages. Then we're gonna get them out of the pan and we're gonna get the heat up and we're going to sort of like fajita these onions and garlic. Try and get a little bit of char, a little bit of color on them. I'm gonna take the sausages, put them back on, Pop the whole thing into the oven, cook it at 350 degrees. The oven is kind of preheating right now, and we're just gonna gently finish slow cooking the sausages until they're perfect and juicy. And that happens when they hit around 160 degrees. So that's gonna be fully cooked and perfectly juicy. If we kind of go any further than that, they, they will dry out. So if you want to be particularly perfect, you could use one of these to check the thermometer to be absolutely certain. So let's just get right into it. Get the pan on medium high heat and add a little bit of oil. Now get those sausages in there and we wanna brown them on both sides until they have really nice color.
Once both sides are nicely browned, get them out of the pan and then get the peppers and onions into the pan immediately. Get them seasoned. If they need a little bit of oil, you can add some. And we just kind of want to char the vegetables a tiny bit. Once the vegetables soften up a little bit, you can add the garlic and the oregano. Now add the sausages back onto the vegetables and toss that into a 350 degree oven. That pork fat is just going to render out and flavor those peppers and onion. Pull them out after about 20 minutes and check the temperature. They should be around 160 degrees. Oh, that smells just about perfect. And like every street fair I've ever been to. Let's see if we nail the juiciness. Juicy and perfect. Now we have to assemble this sandwich. So we've got our provolone. I'm just going to just kind of rip it in half. Two slices is all you need. And then just have a little sandwich roll. This is kind of like a mini club roll. So I'm gonna use that and I'm not gonna cut all the way through, just I'm gonna leave one side intact. And first we're gonna go in with the provolone. Sort of like that. Next we go in with our sausage. Then the peppers. Now we're just gonna throw this back into the oven, let that cheese melt for three to five minutes. That's pretty much exactly the way I like it. Once you taste it, it'll bring you straight to that fair flavor. Incredibly juicy sausage, just perfectly cooked. I mean, there just really is nothing better than this. It's an Italian hot dog. And of course, if you are gluten-free or you're not eating carbs, this works as a, a meal without it. Just a bed of the roasted vegetables, maybe throw in some broccoli rob to the vegetables to kind of round it out, or broccoli, broccolini, whatever, and then plate the sausages on top and just eat as is. Perfectly suitable meal any night of the week. There's something about how the flavors marry together. It's an example of how it's much greater than the sum of its parts. If you've never had this, or if you haven't made it in a while, give it a try. For me, this is pure nostalgia. Don't forget, no more plastic, so if you need a tote bag, remember, I got you. Link in the description. Another one of my favorite recipes in the books. Give it a try, and as always, tag me when you make these recipes and show me on Instagram, at the food freak with two Ks. Well, that's all that I have today. Thanks so much for all my patrons scrolling up on the screen right now. Appreciate you all, appreciate everyone who watches. That's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself.